All right, ladies and gentlemen, this time now you're looking at me. I am at Changi Airport and I'm going somewhere. Not to another headphone show this time around, but I promise you it will be quite interesting. Let's go! This is our ride all the way to Shenzhen. Obviously, because this is Shenzhen Air, we are going to Shenzhen. So yes, right now I'm in China and Seven Hertz has actually invited me to be at their office to find out how earphones are being made. Many people think that making earphones is an extremely easy task, but today we're going to debunk that myth. You can see all the different processes, the assembly, the anodization, the driver making, all of that good stuff in today's episode. Let's go! So we are at the CNC part of the factory at the moment and CNC is really at the heart of 7Hz. They basically CNC a lot of stuff. The 7Hz legato and timers are all completely CNC. For the brand new Sonos, it's a little bit different where the faceplate is CNC aluminum and honestly it looks really pretty. So we're going to check out more on the CNC process. Every time you do CNC, you need the drawing. So this is the drawing of the brand new 7Hz Sonos and they will actually have to calibrate how the CNC machine is going to cut the aluminum. So yeah, this is a 3D drawing of the faceplate. What you have here is a billet of aluminum and a lot of earphones are made of aluminum. Of course, there are those that are made of steel and titanium as well, but those are at different price brackets. What you have here are some CNC machines that is used to lathe aluminum chassis. There are quite a few bits and blades here which can be swapped to fit the particular cut. The white liquid sploshing on the glass is actually lubricant or coolant to prevent chatter or tool failure while machining. So this is a simulation of the CNC run for the 7Hz Sonus' faceplate. The reason for this is when we arrive at the CNC area, they have actually already completed a run for the Sonus. And as such, we are just doing a simulation so there is no actual cutting of the faceplate but these are the nice stroke for the Sonus' faceplate. So as mentioned, the run for the Sonus has been completed. These are some of the finished face paint of the 7Hz Sonus. They are not quite done yet as there are a few more processes that need to be done before they can appear on the product. 7Hz machine a lot of their IEM chassis. So we have next is the Timeless and Dokio. When you want to make a earphone, one of the most important things to do is to basically anodize your metal fittings. So for a lot of earphones, one common material used is <coughs> aluminium and aluminium is a material that you can anodize. Why do you want to anodize? Well, aluminium is a rather soft metal and if you handle anything that's aluminium before, they get scratched up pretty easily. And such, you need to add a layer of anodization to make them hard like my beat. So yeah, we are at the anodization factory to see the Sonus faceplate getting anodized. Firstly, the faceplate is sandblasted to remove most machine marks and to prepare for the anodization process. The faceplates are then placed on the racks. This is quite an important step as if it isn't properly placed, it can fall off during the anodization process. After which, it then goes through a process called chemical cleaning or etching. This includes dipping the loaded racks into sodium hydroxide to clean off any traces of oil from hands as any residue can cause patchiness on the anodization layer. Smart will build up on the faceplate after the chemical cleaning process. This smart is formed from any material that isn't aluminium. The racks are then placed in an acid solution to remove the smart. This is important as smart can also affect the anodization process. Next, the racks are then put into a sulfuric acid solution where electric current is applied. This will then create an anodized layer on the surface of the aluminum. The racks are then rinsed again. The anodized layer is actually porous and when you zoom in real deep, it basically has a honeycomb structure. And as such, you have room to color the layer. So the racks with the faceplate is then dipped into a tank with dye to color it. Lastly and super importantly, the racks with the faceplate is then sealed by dipping the racks into a solution of nickel acetate to seal off all pores on the anodized layer, allowing it to have maximum 
chemical resistance and for the colouring dye to remain sealed. At the heart of every earphone is the driver. We take a closer look at the manufacturing of a dynamic driver today. First, a mold must be designed for the driver, after which the mold is then CNC'd from a block of brass. This process has to be of very high precision to ensure consistency in the drivers. Some dynamic drivers have a metal dome, and this is the CNC process for the metal dome. This will be used to punch the metal dome from metal sheets. To maintain a high level of rigidity, a ring is then used in the manufacturing process. The rings are then placed into a jig to be placed on the mould in a quick and efficient manner. The stamped metal sheets are then placed onto the mould as well for this particular dynamic driver. Following that, a prep liquid crystal polymer or DLC material is then placed on the mould after which it is then pressed to form the diaphragm. The voice coil provides the motive force to the diaphragm by the reaction of a magnetic field to the current passing through. The technician uses a jig to hold the diaphragm and another jig to hold the voice coil. Glue is then applied by a machine consistently to the diaphragm and later is kept with the jig with the voice coil on it. The glued jig is then placed on a rotary timer and when it makes one complete rotation, the glue would have cured. After that is done, the diaphragm and voice coil is then placed into a basket and sealed off with a protective cover. Lastly and crucially, some non-conductive glue is then applied to prevent the driver from shorting out. So this is basically a testing phase to make sure drivers are within spec. So making earphones, one of the most crucial parts are the filters and dampeners. Everybody just like, you know, don't really care about them. But honestly, I can tell you they make a big difference when it comes to tuning. So right now, we're going to check out some of the tuning materials that is used. So right now, we have the stamping feature of the machine. This is just basically to cut the filters into shape and sizes for different earphones. And yeah, so this is one of them. This is a production line. You can see they just basically cut out the stuff. It just goes on the chain and they roll it very nicely this is the later stage of it so basically they're removing the excess and lastly you have some really really fine filters over here for your earphones for tuning so what you see here is basically a machine that measures the density of each material. It is incredibly important that the density is consistent. This is so that each filter is extremely consistent and you need that consistency when it comes to making earphones. So now they're going to stretch the material again to see the strength of how, how strong the material is. So everything is really in control to ensure the consistency of the filter. And of course, everything is measured. So they actually have those graphs over here for those people who really like to read graphs. Um, so this machine over here is basically a very big microscope that can see all the small little nooks and crannies of the material over here. So the material that is being tested is this white tape roll that you can see. And when you want to see the structure of it, obviously you cannot see it over here because it's really not that magnified. But using this little microscope, we can see the structure of it. So when you look at the structure, this is how it actually looks like. It actually has those really, really small little uh, pores that it's showing and that is what people use to tune earphones. Filters are then placed onto drivers and measured ensuring consistent performance. Soldering drivers together is actually quite tricky as the contacts are really small. Once done, it is then placed into the chassis of the IM, awaiting final faceplate assembly. Faceplate is then checked again for any blemishes and they are cleaned thoroughly. The 7Hz logo is then applied and after that, they are cleaned once more. And once that is done, the faceplate is then placed onto the chassis and the earphones are measured once again. If they pass QC, your earphones are ready to ship.
So as you can see, making an earphone is simply not that easy. Everybody thinks it's such an easy thing. Just throw a driver into a chassis and that's all. But really, that really isn't the case. You got to like first design the chassis, make sure that your cutting marks for the CNC is all well calculated. Then you got to anodize the chassis. Well, when it comes to the driver side, well, there's a lot of things to do. First, you need to make sure the diaphragm is right, design the diaphragm, create a mold for the diaphragm. And later, we even went to see things such as the filter. And many people think that filter is very easy to do, but really, it is extremely, well, it is actually quite difficult to do. You need to ensure consistency so that your tuning can be consistent. I hope you enjoy today's episode of the Super Chong Super Audio Show. Um, yeah, I really would like to thank 7Hz for this opportunity to see the processes behind how a earphone is being made. And I hope the viewers will enjoy it as well. And with that said, I hope to see you guys soon.